So in the last few videos, I've been talking about how the thinking process isn't what we think it is. And yet it influences what we think we're thinking. It influences what we think we're feeling. And in this video, I'm going to show you how it influences what we think we're perceiving. So Daniel Dennett is a famous philosopher, and he came up with a book called Consciousness Explained. I've talked about it in other videos. Wonderful metaphor. He just uses it in the wrong place. He uses it for consciousness, but it's a wonderful metaphor if we use it for thinking. See, one of the biggest mistakes out there is confusing thinking. The whole process of thinking, which comes from the brain and originates with the brain and is all wonderfully dissected with neuroscience and consciousness itself, which, as I've talked about in other videos, is, is the real hard problem and cannot be dissected uh, the, in the same way that the thinking process can. But the metaphor he uses, is, is he calls it the final drafts model, and it's this idea that you would never handle, hand in the final draft of a paper. You come up with a rough draft, and then you edit, modify it, and then you hand in the final draft after all the uh, revisions have been made. And this is a metaphor because that's what the brain is doing in terms of the world around us. And so it's trying to figure out reality, and it modifies these, and it, it edits and revises, and then the final draft doesn't become consciousness, as uh, Dennett puts it. It actually does become what we think we're thinking. And so it's very influenced by uh, the data around us, and that's why you don't look why someone's giving you a shot. And um, my chiropractor, whenever he's making a really painful adjustment, he would never, he lies to me. He's like, well, we're going to do this on three, and he'll go one, and then he does the adjustment. And that's a really clever thing to do because my brain doesn't have enough time to do any editorial revisions that this is going to hurt, and then it's going to actually hurt much worse. So I want to give you a real simple example. This was years ago when my daughter and I were on the kitchen floor, we were doing watercolors, and um, we had two solo cups. One, I was actually drinking something, the other was we were, the other solo cup we were using to rinse out the paintbrushes. And it was such a wonderful moment because I had mistakenly taken a big drink of the paint water. And it was wonderful because it was the desert of the real. And in other words, there is a real world out there, which I've been trying to... Um, talk about in these videos and and that's very um uh shocking to people because we've been in kind of this postmodern uh version where there is no uh desert of the real but there is a desert of the real and so my brain was processing the paint water but it did so in a zen moment without expectation and it didn't taste like paint water in fact it didn't taste disgusting it simply wasn't what i expected the moment my brain had done those revisions and said oh it looked around and said you're drinking paint water, that moment it became disgusting. And I absolutely remember that moment where suddenly my perceptions went from, you know, this Zen desert of the real to a really, you know, bad taste in the mouth of paint water. And uh, even though I think I was sort of laughing at the time because the experience was so uh, interesting. And so let me end on a Zen story that really uh, talks about this and puts it to the point. Uh, there are two students and they're arguing about a flag that's moving in the wind. And one student is so certain that it's the flag that's moving. Another student argues, no, it's not the flag. It's the wind that's moving. And the teacher interrupts them and says, you're both wrong. It's mind that is moving. And so mind, the thinking mind, is the one that's moving in the sense that it's revising, editing, and it's creating this world of what you think you're thinking, what you think you're feeling, and what you think you're perceiving.